Welcome to Frost Sessions, the Frost School of Music's official podcast. In this episode, Frost Vocal Performance Program Director Dr. Frank Ragsdale interviews the Frost School's newest professor of vocal performance, Kim Josephson. Together, they exchange experiences within their voice careers. They talk about the business of music, how to unlock your potential as a performer, and why it is important to remain vulnerable. Thank you so much for joining us, and remember to stay tuned to Frost Sessions. Hello, and I'm your host, Frank Ragsdale, Associate Professor and Chair of the Department of Vocal Performance here at the Frost School at the University of Miami. And joining me today is the newest member of the Department of Vocal Performance, Kim Josephson. Kim is hailed as one of opera's most versatile baritones. Kim is a regular guest at leading opera companies, including the Metropolitan Opera, where since 1991, he has performed more than 230 performances of 24 roles, including the title role of Rigoletto, Germain from La Traviata, Enrico from Lucia di Lamamur, and Bercore from L'Elysir d'Amore, to name a few. He has served as chair of the vocal area at the University of Oklahoma and was the Edith Kinney Gaylord Presidential Professor of Voice. Welcome, Kim. We are so thrilled to have you here at Frost. Thank you so much. I'm so delighted to join the fabulous faculty at Frost. Very great. Thank you. So the first question I want to ask you is one that I always find very interesting and fascinating because everybody's path um, to where they go, and especially when we're talking about singers or artists, is very different. So will you tell us a little bit about what um, helped you decide to go into music and being a singer, and then maybe um, a, a little bit about your training to get you there? Well, that's a, a very interesting question, Frank, and a long story, but to, to make it longer, it started, uh, I was a, a tuba player who wanted to be a conductor, and um, I was so fortunate. I grew up in Houston, where we had the Houston Grand Opera, and we had the Houston Symphony, and we had uh, 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 the ballet as well, and uh, just an absolutely vibrant theater scene. And, uh, and to be a part of all that, just, it, it, it was my passion. And um, I wanted to be a conductor. You know, I, I grew up uh, watching uh, Leonard Bernstein uh, with the uh, uh, young people's concerts on the air and, uh, and to see Stokowski conducting, you know, on television. I mean, these were, this was fantastic. And uh, I was fortunate enough, I had, I, I had a wonderful mentor a teacher, a teacher who inspired me and, 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 and allowed for this passion to come alive. And, uh, and he sh showed me so much about music. Ultimately, I went to Europe with him as a high school student and uh, on, a, on a cultural exchange. And of course, this was, this was absolutely mind blowing, you know, to visit Europe as a, as a kid from Texas. And, and, um, Nevertheless, the, 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 halfway through college, I had some free electives. And I, I uh, had always loved to sing, but never really thought I had much of a voice. And so I, uh, I, took a, uh, I went to my advisor and he said, well, Kim, if you, if you, if you can find a faculty member who'll take you, you can certainly sign up for some voice lessons. And so this was a secondary instrument and what have you. I went in and sang and, and I was like, is it? you sing like this or do you sing like this? And she was like, listen, kid, you, you have to be a singer. Well, this was, um, this was bizarre, but that's, that's how it all started out. And, uh, and, you know, one thing led to another opportunities and, and, and encouragement and someone there to foster this dream. I love that where it says out in front of our, our office, you know, uh, live your dreams. And uh, that's exactly that's exactly what was happening to me. I, here I was, I was so in love with classical music, in love with the, the orchestral side of things. But then I, then I, then I met the opera. <laughs> and uh, uh, before long, everyone was like, well, Kim, you should really join the chorus. Uh, and so I joined the chorus. And, and then I'm, I'm on stage with people like Marilyn Horn and, and uh, John Vickers and, and, uh, 
on John Vickers, Peter Grimes, I was like, if, if this was, is what opera is, I, I got to be a part of it, you know. Uh, the first little bit role I ever had was in, in Carlisle Floyd's Bilby's Doll. And uh, I mean, I had the tiniest part was by the time the performance got there, it was cut <laughs> you know, out of a three and a half hour opera. I think that was only done twice. But nevertheless, uh, that's how I got started. And of course, once I was addicted, what can you do? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, um, isn't that the, the, the reason why we are teachers? And why we do what we do is because we want to foster that in students because we had mentors and people that fostered in us and opened our eyes to things that we didn't know um, and didn't realize we could do. So that's it's such a great part of being an educator. And I always say that, you know, our goal, my goal is to help every student find that passion and find where, where they know their path is supposed to be. And then I'm successful no matter what that path is. Right. Absolutely. If we can help them find their own voice and their own yes. and what they want to say, you yes. know, on the planet, if there's anything we need, it's 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 music, it's it's poetry, and it's the the love we bring to the world in serving the geniuses that we serve. Right. And so it's what can I tell you? It's like I'm I'm so thrilled to um, to have had that kind of uh, help and that kind of nurturing and now that's why i'm here right so i know this might be hard because you've had so many experiences but could you tell us maybe a couple of the highlights of your career sure um um first of all just can i i i'll just backtrack to say one thing you know i i did two degrees in 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 college and then it was, I, I was invited to sing in the course of, um, I was traveling with Texas Opera Theater and they uh, invited me to sing in the chorus at Christmas time of Pagliacci. Well, who was singing Pagliacci? It was, it was uh, John Vickers singing Canio and, and uh, Diana Soviero was singing Neda, Matteo Managuero was singing Tonio, Pat Raftery was singing Silvio, and this kid was singing Beppe, Tonio de Paolo. The cat stole the show. I was like, first of all, I want to be in this. Pinnell was directing. I want to be in this. So I got in this, and I, I heard this kid singing. It was like, whoa. It's like, what a legato. What an effortless sound. I knew he'd been a baritone. Someone took him up. Anyway, I got in touch with his teacher, and I began to study. A few uh -huh. years later, he took, took off to Germany, left me in Austin. But he left me in Austin with a great uh, a, a a technique, a workable technique. And as a consequence, this was one of the first highlights. I decided that uh, I was gonna move to New York and give it a shot. I was gonna try. I couldn't, you know, pass up on a, at least trying to make, to see how far this thing would go. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I was working for UPS and unloading boxes in the truck, right? And I, was, I sang a little, a little concert in a church. Now, this is how strange things get. The guy that was working with Jerome Hines in the uh, Opera Music Theater International program heard me sing, and he needed a cover for his baritone uh, that they had a big performance come up, and he needed a cover. So they hired me to cover. Jerome Hines heard me sing, and it was like, oh, Kim. <laughs> it was like, well, what, are you, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm unloading boxes for UPS <laughs> on the night shift, you know, so I can make $8 instead of 6 And anyway, um, to make a long story short, he said, no, 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 we got to get you out of this truck. And because of some donors and some people who believed in young people and music, they donated money, you know, and it, it, they afforded me, uh, I think it was a $10,000 stipend to go study. But Frank, listen, Heinz had it set up for me to work with Franco Corelli for two years, a lesson every week. I was working with Frank Cassaro at the Actors Studio in New York wow, yeah. City, in the Actors Studio every Saturday, every Saturday morning. Sorry, can we stop for a second? Uh. Try to turn that one off. Edit radio. Edit. We will definitely edit. No worries. 
continue? One second. Oh, okay. wait, whenever Frank's ready, yeah. Um, and maybe this is all too, 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 too much, but I'm just trying to tell you, oh. like, as a highlight where, where this went was, it was to meet these people that, you know, really set it up. No, I think it's great. I hope it's okay. Okay. Ready? Ready? <laughs> okay, so uh, what, what, what he afforded me was an opportunity to work with Franco Corelli every week, you know, for two years. He also, they, they gave us Italian lessons. They gave us German lessons. They gave us movement classes. They gave us, I worked with Frank Cassaro in the actor's studio in New York City every Saturday morning for two years. Now, I mean, that's because, you know, we found a, a Jerry, Jerry Hines, Jerome Hines, the great Metropolitan base, found these donors, these angels, Jerry's angels, he called them. <laughs> and uh, and they, they invested in, in young people like myself. Then, you know, we ultimately performed in the, um, in the, in the Newark uh, performance space. And uh, there was, I'm singing Papageno with, uh, with Jerome Hines, the Sarastro, and believe it or not, you know, we're reviewed by the New York Times. And I'm telling you, well, it was the, it was the Frank Cassaro and uh, Maurice Sendak production of Magic Flute. It was the East Coast premiere of that. And I mean, you see, these are the kind of, that's a highlight. Right. You know? yeah. That's a highlight. I, later on in my life, you know, uh, I, I, uh, it was very odd how I got my uh, Metropolitan Opera uh, gig was um, absolutely bizarre that a tenor who was uh, scheduled to sing canceled his audition and my manager literally begged them to hear this new baritone. They were like, oh, we don't need to hear a baritone. We, we've got plenty of baritones. That's all set, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, he talked him into having me, I was singing, uh, I was singing Malatesta up in Connecticut. And he said, can you be here tomorrow? <laughs> and I was like, I will be there tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, and I just jumped in and sang. And uh, a week later, I had a contract at the Metropolitan Opera. That's a highlight, you yeah. know. Uh, um, I was fortunate enough uh, to sing with the greatest singers in the world. The first time I sang with Pavarotti, you know, uh, uh, in the, they, it was when the three tenors did the opening night at the right. Met, you know, and uh, uh, there I was with with Pop singing his first act from Otello. I had a little small role, but it was it was heaven, you know, just to be on that stage or with with Placido or or Kiri or any of these uh, Renee Fleming, uh, Natalie Desai, all these different people. That was a, one thing after another. But I suppose, you know, um, the greatest or the maybe the biggest thing, I, I've, I've been fortunate, Frank. I, I was given opportunities to sing um, four different world premieres. Mm. And, uh, and that is the most extraordinary experience. To, and that, you know, that's what it really excites me about Frost, too. You know, you guys do contemporary music, modern music, modern opera, living opera. I kid, I kid my students. I often say, you know, I have Verdi's phone number. I know how it's supposed to go because I've actually called him. I can't <laughs> give you the number, but, you know, uh, uh, but with the, when you're actually doing it with a living composer, for example, I did a, a view from the bridge. It was based on the Arthur Miller play a view from the bridge and, um, uh, Bill Bolcom and, um, Arnold Weinstein did the, um, the music and the libretto. And I got the chance to, to create the role of Eddie Carboni. Now that's been recorded. We did it at the Metropolitan. We, we premiered it in Chicago, did it at the Metropolitan, uh, did it in Kennedy Center, did it in Rome. I mean, we just had, a, it's had a, quite a life. And uh, I think uh, you sang with one of our alum and who's teaching here now, Sandra Lopez Neal was in that. Absolutely. Yeah. The wonderful <laughs> Sandra. Yeah. But you know, what was really so cool was to actually do it with Arthur Miller there. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, he actually re rewrote a new aria for the bass. Uh, he didn't write one for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he, you know, uh, it, that, but that was a great highlight. I did Andre Previn's second opera, A uh, Brief Encounter, down in Houston. Fantastic show. Did Stephen Schwartz's uh, only opera. 
It's called Seance on a Wet Afternoon. We did it out in, in California and then at New York City Opera. Right. Um, People know that, but it's, it's very interesting. Oh, and it, it was so much fun to work with Stephen. Yeah, Golly, sure. what a fountain of creativity. What a, you know, and uh, oh, he's so fantastic. His, uh, you know, the, the way he sets the, the words and, and the, the attention he gives to this music. Uh, he, he was so beautiful. What a soul. Oh. These are the highlights, you know. I worked with the late Steve Stuckey. We did a, we did a thing called Classical Style, which was based on the life of uh, Charles Rosen. Um, oh. or, uh, actually on his book, The Classical Style. And uh, it, this is a fantastic piece. We did it at the Ojai Music Festival and then at Carnegie Hall. But all of these are just, I mean, I, what an adventure. You know, uh, who would think that a little tuba player would, uh, would ultimately find his way onto the opera stages around the world. You know? Right. Yeah, that's why it's so, uh, so interesting to find out people's stories because they, they're just so different and, um, and, and exciting and, and um, wonderful in their own way, you know? Yeah. Um, so I have another question for you. Why did you decide, you had a great position at uh, University of Oklahoma what, why did you decide to come to Frost? What about the Frost program um, drew you here uh, and helped you to make that decision? Well, uh, besides you know, me and well, you know, faculty. <laughs> that, that goes, with, goes without saying, Frank, but no. Uh, we did know uh, each other in Oklahoma, so that's. That's, that's right. Important. Well, uh, you know, the fact of it is uh, when I came and first of all, I, I guess our, the, how this sort of worked out was, um, I was in Salzburg, mm -hmm. and um, and there I visited your summer program, mm -hmm. and Robin Redman, with whom I sang um, Hamlet in Fort Worth, and and well, she invited me to give a master class, and so I gave a a master class with your wonderful students over there in Salzburg in the summertime, and it's look, I mean, first of all. You know what colleges have 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 summer programs in Europe? Well, they're few and far between. But of course, you guys have n not not a uh, not a, a mediocre run of the mill program in Europe. But you have a, a, a premier program that's been here for many many years. And Robin does a great job with it. And anyway, she invited me to to give a master class, and I just had a blast. Enjoyed the students. Enjoyed the enjoyed the camaraderie, enjoyed what, what I could feel. And then, uh, and then I was invited, you know, uh, I heard about the, the opening of uh, a possible uh, professorship at the University of Miami. And I was like, hmm, well, let's go visit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what the heck, what's, what's, what's the worst thing could happen in, uh, in, in February or March? Leaving the icy, <laughs> the icy winds of of the plains, the south, southern plains, in the, in the middle of the United States, and going to Miami. Well, uh, and so I come over here, and and you know I have to say, as I visited um, the the classes and I met the students and and was around the rest of the faculty, what happened in me? I I just had this feeling of of what possibilities. First of all, I mean, look, it's a, it's a, it, you're, the, the, the peer institutions of, of, of the University of Miami are places like uh, Juilliard and, and uh, New England Conservatory and, and Indiana. I mean, we're in the top tier of, of colleges and, and with, a, with a, a vibrant program that's, that's, that's renowned for its uh, creativity. I mean, even these through lines, these create through lines where we, we have a program that you, well, you could explain it better than I, uh, Frank, but the, 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 where you're, you're, you're looking to make things, you know, from a historical perspective and a research perspective and, a, and then the, you know, invigorating performances and just what you can do um, uh, synergistically. That's exciting. It's like, uh, for me, I, I mean, I, 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 first of all, I like challenges and I'm, I, I don't feel, I'm not, I'm not anywhere near um, um, a place in my life of coasting. I'm, I'm here to uh, build uh, with you guys. 
And that's what's exciting. I just feel like uh, I feel like I'm a part of something dynamic and I feel like we're going someplace and I'm I'm excited to be a part of the team. Great. Well, we're so thrilled that you're going to be with us. Um, and so we touched on this a little bit earlier, but why what is it about teaching that you love? Um, in my experience, um, you know, uh, somebody that's had a great career like yours uh, has to have as much passion for teaching as they do for that singing to be successful. That's been my experience. And so I know you have, and I've watched you teach and I've watched your students. And so I know you have this incredible passion and energy for, uh, for teaching. So what is it about it that, that you really love? I think, I think that, I think that, uh, I think that I'm uh, most intrigued by the pot again that I hate to use it again, but uh, the possibilities. I, uh, I, 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 I keep generally behind my piano. I have a little sign and it's the, maybe the most important word in the whole music business, or at least it is to me, it's believe. It says believe. And you know, um, when you, when you can, when you can unlock the potential of another human being and open a world that, that just is, is maybe beyond belief and help them believe enough to try, to let go and really try. You know, uh, I, say it, I say this a lot, and I mean it sincerely. You have to um, sometimes let go of the things you know to learn the things you don't know, you know. I mean, uh, and it's like, if it, that's what, that's, what's exciting. If you can just get, get someone to work with you and let them explore their own, their own gift. I, I think that's what I, I really try to s stress, Frank, that in fact, it's not the voice that's the gift. It's this human being. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 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 I say it like this. When God thought the world needed Mozart, God gave us Mozart. When God thought the world needed Beethoven, he gave us Beethoven. And now when God thought the world needed you, he gave us you. And when you bring it, now you don't, maybe you don't believe in God, maybe you do, you know. So the universe thought the world needed Mozart, the universe gave us Mozart. I don't care, that's not the point. The point is you are the gift. And you are so unique, who, whoever you are. You know, you, there's only one of you. And if we can allow that person, you know, to, to speak, to sing, to love, to give from that wealth of their own soul, to watch them open up and give that, oh man, you know, that changes the world. So that's why I'm excited about teaching. I try to do that. But that's one of the things that makes singing so challenging, isn't it? Is because as, as listeners, we want to hear somebody that has something to say, that is truthful, and that is vulnerable. And that's hard to get up and open yourself and be vulnerable to people. But Absolutely. Those are the only people we want to hear. I'll never forget one summer in Salzburg. It was, um, Isakoski gave a recital. It was beautiful. It was like perfect. And two nights later, Matila gave a recital with Martin Katz. And first of all, I thought the piano was going to burst into flames. But when Matila sang, it wasn't perfect. But oh my gosh, the, how she opened herself up, not, not to mention that she did the splits, of course, but um, how she opened herself up and had so much to say. Um, it was just night and day for me, the difference between what we really want to hear in someone, right? Yeah. If somebody came to me and said, oh, that was a perfect, beautiful performance, I would be like, oh, I didn't do my job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a perfect, pretty performance really is the one, right? But, um, but yeah, we want, that's what makes it hard, is yep. that we have to open ourselves up. And I think that's also what we have to do as teachers, right? Absolutely. We have to be vulnerable to our students so that they can see what, what it takes. Absolutely. The authenticity is everything. And yeah. I mean, you know, we want to, we, what we're talking about is art, not artifice. You know, not artificial. And it's like, you know, I, I um, it's too funny. I, I, I can't remember. I, it was in, a, I think, it was a, this movie, I think it was called um, 
a late quartet. Oh, I right. I, I, I'll never forget, you know, uh, I think Christopher Walken has uh, Parkinson's or whatever. And he talked about playing for, uh, for uh, I, was it Pablo Casals, some famous cellist. And in the story, uh, you know, he says, uh, you know, the, the, the young man that, uh, or he said, I was so angry with him because he said, bravo. And he said, good to all the things that I, uh, so some of the things I played so miserably or so, so poorly. And he said, well, any, any, I think it was brilliant because uh, Walken then says that Pablo says to him, well, you know, any moron can, uh, can, can point out what you did wrong. Mm-hmm. He said, I choose to celebrate transcendence what you did wonderfully what was so uniquely you isn't that what we do isn't that what we isn't that why we love somebody like a john vickers or a or a maria Callas? it's not perfect no but it's fantastic it's coming from somewhere deep inside that just is so vulnerable so rich and i say you know yes yeah, Maria Callas really, well, I was about six years old and I remember um, I loved Wagner. Who knew? I don't know why. Um, <laughs> and then uh, listening to, I got some recordings of Maria Callas and that's when I said, uh, I have to do this. Have There's to. no way I cannot do this. It was just the most amazing thing. And you know, you listen to somebody like that and you don't have to understand a word. It's in their voice. You don't even have to see them. You can, you can hear, you hear it in their voice, right? Absolutely. Because you feel it, it, don't you? Yeah, it, it resonates inside you in another place. It's not in the ears, you know. It's not like it's not. Oh, let me, you know. It's not that. It right. it either touches you or it doesn't. You know, it's like if you've heard if you if you if you listen to La Bo- the conclusion of La Boheme and the tears not in your eye, you didn't hear La Boheme. <laughs> right. Am I right? Same no matter how many times you've heard it. Same with same thing with Traviata. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Um, so. Uh, I know that you're here and we're going to be starting this um, exciting, uh, very different semester. And I know it's going to be um, challenging, but I, I just think that um, this time has given us a way to look at things differently, to appreciate things differently. Um, and so I, I know that even though this is your first semester with us and we're going to be doing it a little differently, um, that uh, you'll bring so much to what we are going to give to our students. And um, I just am I'm so thankful to know you as a person because um, you are that kind of, you are that giving open person. And, and um, I know that's why uh, I see in your students the progress that I see and in the master classes when you work with people. Um, to me, that's the real gift. Thank you, Frank. You're a wonderful singer and you're a wonderful teacher, um, but that part of your teaching and that part of your gift, I think, is what is really amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. 